Last year, we had the pleasure of uh, doing seminars with uh, Denny Rickards, a fellow Oregonian. And man, does he know about lakes. He's written some fabulous books and videos on lake fishing. And I know, Mike, you really love lake fishing. Well, I do enjoy it. And when I'm at the sports show, not doing programs of my own, he's one of the guys I like to go and watch the seminars. And I think he knows about as much about lake fishing as or he's probably forgotten more than I'll ever <laughs> Same learn. Here. Yep. And with most fishing, it all starts at home, preparation, planning. And I think he's got some great tips on kind of what we need to know when we're getting ready to go and what we need to take with us. Then he has some great ideas on some of the rules, some of the things to remember when you go out to fish lakes. So take it away, Danny. You know, one of the reasons I fish lakes because it offers us an opportunity to catch a lot of big fish probably a lot more than what you're going to do on a stream and a river. And the other thing that I really like about fishing lakes is it gives you a lot of solitude, but you know, we struggle a lot of times because lakes seem to be intimidating for a lot of us, but folks, it doesn't have to be. Fishing lakes is really a matter of three things. Presentation, which really includes your ability to cast, get the fly to the fish, the fly line that you choose to fish with, which controls the depths and the angles, and the retrieve. So if you can concentrate on those points along with the patterns that you use, make sure that they're suggestive, they imitate more than one food source, and look at the conditions that you face when you're out on the water, because those conditions will change and vary. So uh, these are the reasons that I'm successful on lakes. You know, folks, one of the things that I find that's really critical, and I try to share this with all the clients when I'm guiding, is that when you get out to the lake, before you even get started, there's five key things that you have to look at because these five keys are going to give these trout direction as to where they're going to be, what depth they'll be at, what they're going to feed, how fast they'll digest their food, when they spawn, and here's the five that I look at. First thing I'm going to look at is the sky. Is it sunny or cloudy? Because that'll make a lot of difference on what fly we're going to use, what depth we're going to fish. Second point that's critical to me is the water. Is it flat like you see here right now, or is it rippled? third thing, is the water warm or is it cold? Because if the water's cold, that means we're going to have to slow down our retrieves. If it's warmer, we can do a lot of other things that are different. We can speed up our retrieve. Fourth thing, I look at the water and determine whether it's clear or it's cloudy. Because if it's cloudy, we can do some things that we can't do when the water's clear. That's a tougher presentation thing. And the fifth thing, one that you have to know, you've got to know the depth of the water you're fishing, folks. If you don't have some way of measuring it with a depth finder or something, then you can probe and count down on your line until you start hitting that bottom. But these are the key things, and all these things will direct and tell these fish where they're going to be, what they're going to eat, how soon they're going to digest, is points I just made a minute ago. And from those points, all that tells us, it'll tell us what line to use, what retrieve to use, what flies, what speed to pull them. And it's really kind of a, a key to what you need to do in order to be successful lines for fishing lakes, one that I use 70% of the time is Cortland's Camo line. That's an intermediate line, and the reason it's so important, they're the only company so far who have been able to design a line that will think, sink from maybe an inch to an inch and a quarter uh, per second. You need a line that's going to sink slowly and hold you in the zone, and that's what that Camo line does. The other line that I use a lot is the Cortland 444SL, and that's a line that twice as fast, almost two inches per second. And uh, you need to fix that line in depths of six to 12 feet. And it's, you can go with faster sinking stuff, but the key is to get it in the zone and keep it there. And those faster sinking lines sometimes will travel down below it too quick. The camo, with a slow sink rate, you don't want to sit here and count all day waiting for your fly to get down there. So basically, those are the two lines that I use. You can always use floaters but I find that you have less options with a floating line as opposed to the line that sinks because of what we imitate. So that's basically what I use on lakes. And of course, there's a ghost tip line out there also made by Cortland that is fast becoming one of my favorites because it allows you to match the emerging insects that come up through the water probably better than the other line on the market. So the camo and a type two are my first choices. The clear floater and the camo would be, or the uh, ghost tip would be my other two that I would use on lakes for the most part. It's, uh, the biggest difference right now is it's going to allow us to make our presentations a little smoother on the water. If you get, find a flat condition like this right now, you're going to spook a lot of fish if you're false casting the colored line. The clear lines won't reflect any sun and allows you to get your fly out there without moving those fish. So 
That plus the fact that they ride a little higher, I think will make a big difference for those of us who want to fish either dry on lakes or even on the emerges. The main thing is to get your fly in front of that fish without spooking him, and that's what that line's going to allow us to do. The water gets real flat like this. That tends to put fish down a little bit deeper, so I just switched to a seal bugger, and I'm going to probe down on these deeper depths now and see if we can't get something that, because they'll tend to lay a little deeper when that bright sun with the flat water comes out. So I'm going to use this kind of pole just like this, see if we can get them to react to this, and th there he is right there. So all you have to do is just start probing. If what you're using isn't working, you have to face these flat conditions like this. Sometimes it's easier to go down, and that's what I mean by not being afraid to experiment and try different flies. And the bugger is such a suggestive fly for me that uh, you just have to, you have to try this different stuff. This water's a little darker, so I dropped that fly down a little bit deeper while we were talking just to see if that would make a difference. And they are, they're laying a little bit, di little bit deeper. This is a nice cutthroat again, about 16, 17 inches. They're a little more lethargic. You see, he's not overly excited about the cold water and showing him that net. That's a nice cutthroat, though. Took that bugger really well. There's a nice cutthroat. That's a Yellowstone cutthroat. I'll put him right in there and let him... Ah, oh, he's ready to go. For still waters, that, in fact, that thing's effective fly for just about anything. Steelhead guys do well with that particular fly. I went down deeper, and that's why I put on the blacker pattern so it'd show up a little bit guys better. Guys, want to learn more about stillwater fly fishing? My first book, Fly Fishing Still Waters, is really a how-to and covered 30 years of fishing lakes, and I think that would be a tremendous aid for you if you're interested more on where the bigger, better uh, lakes and the bigger fish are. The second book, which is Fly Fishing the West Trophy Lakes, will cover those points and how to fish each one of those lakes. And the last book that we just came out with is on stillwater patterns. Not just the ones that I fish, but some of the best dries, nymphs, streamers. Uh, there's 15 of the best experts in the country, the people that I am, I'm confident in, and I'm, I respect their, their ability out on lakes, and they have their patterns. And all this is in contained in there, not only how to fish them, but how to tie them. And so if you guys are interested in any of that, or even the videos where we show you the, the patterns and the techniques that we've talked about, uh, you can contact me at area code 541-381-2218, or you can write us. We're at P.O. Box 470, Fort Klamath, Oregon, 97626. We'll be glad to send you a catalog. It contains all the products that I use. Uh, on the water, and I think you'll find that everything in there will help you to be a better stillwater fly fisherman.